Hi, we're going to be starting with Unit 10 on co the coordinate plane and the distance between points. And I just want to kind of go over some stuff with you. This is a review probably for the majority of you. I already have a coordinate plane out there on the paper, but I've got some um, boxes in there that I want you to fill out as we go and some points that I want you to plot. First of all, this is what we call a quadrant plane. This means that, these, that you've got two number lines that are going to intersect. The horizontal number line right here is going to be your x-axis and your y-axis is going to be the vertical number line. Where they are going to intersect right in the middle is 0, 0, which is called our origin. And you will hear me talk about the origin, meaning where these two number lines intersect at 0, 0. It is uh, split because you've got two lines that are intersected into four different parts. These are called quadrants. If you notice, they are, they are labeled with Roman numerals. And we're going to start in the upper right-hand corner for quadrant one, and we're going to go counterclockwise. A clock goes around this way. Counterclockwise means we're going the opposite direction of the way the clock moves. So quadrant one, if you notice, has got two positive numbers in it. Quadrant two has got the x, the x has an, a negative number and the y is positive. In quadrant three, we have two negative numbers, both x and y are, are going to be negative. And in quadrant four, you've got a positive x and a negative y. Well, we're talking about these um, points here. We're talking about x will always go before the y. Think about x comes before y in the alphabet. So your x, which is going to be this uh, number line right here, the horizontal one, will always come first, and then we're going to compare it to, or we're going to label it up with the y coordinate. So when we look at this, we're going to look at some points that we have in the coordinate plane. If we look right here at the bit in the middle, we know that that is 0, 0, because I haven't moved either way from this point on the x-axis, and I'm not moved up or down on the y-axis. If you notice, anything to the right on the x-axis of the origin is positive and anything to the left of the origin and the x-axis is negative. Makes a lot of sense. And then if you think about it, anything going up is positive on the y-axis, and anything from the origin down is going to be in a negative direction on the y-axis. So if we look at these points, I'm going to know that this is 0, 0. If I look at this point here, that means I had to count from the origin 8 units over, okay, and go five units up on the y-axis, and when I go to both of these, they're going to meet at the 8, 5. So I know that 8 was on the x-axis. Remember, x is always going to be leveled first. So 8 is first, and then 5 on the y-axis. They're both positive numbers because, as you can see, the x-axis is showing positive here, and the y-axis is showing positive there. So they're both positive numbers. Here I've got a negative 4 and a 7. I'm going to look on the x-axis first for negative 4, which is here, and I'm going to go up 7 units, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and that point falls on where the y-axis is at 7. So this point would be labeled negative 4 and 7. Notice that I've got a point lying right here on the x-axis. Well, if I look on my x-axis, negative 9, it falls on negative 9. I did not go up or down on the y-axis, so it's going to be labeled as a 0. I didn't move either way to go x or y. So that is going to be labeled my y-value is 0. So negative 9 and 0 will fall right there on the x-axis. If you look over here, I've got a positive 3. Here's going to from the origin to the 3 and a negative 5. It's going to go down because my y values are negative going down. This is a positive 3 and a negative 5, so this will be found in the quadrant 4. Down here, I've got a negative 10 and a negative 9. I'm searching for my negative 10 on my x-axis because that comes first, and I'm going to go down all the way to negative 6 on my y-axis, and that is going to give me the point where those two intersect. It's going to give me negative 10 and negative 6. 
So go ahead, take a moment. If you have to pause the video to write all of this down, I want you to make sure that you know your, qua your coordinates, your quadrants, you know where the origin is, and you know how to write out your numbers. All right, let's look here at the following. You want to plot the following points, and I don't have an actual coordinate plane, so I am going to just draw one, and I'm going to start here, and I'm going to draw this out this way, and this out this way. I've not labeled my X and Y axis, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's look in the X values first. I've got a positive 5, negative 4, positive 2, negative 6, positive 1. The largest I have is going to be negative 5, so I'm going to come all the way down here. I'm going to just go for about 6. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We'll just do 8. I'm going to label here. I'm trying to get them right on the line. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. I'm going to go up 8 here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Do yourself a favor, take the time to label these when you're doing this. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and negative 8. All right, if we're going to look at 5 and 6, remember I started the origin. X is my first number, so that's going to be 5. And then my Y is going to go up in a positive 6 direction, which is going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this point right here, if I run it to over here, should be at 6 and it is, is going to be A. Let's look at negative 4 and negative 3. That's going to be my B. So I'm going to go negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 on the x-axis, and I'm going to drop 1, 2, 3, where it's going to match up with negative 3 there, on the y-axis, and I know that this is going to be my point B. If you want to, why don't you try C, D, and E, and then just come back and see if you've got the right points according to my. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you've got the right points. So I've got two, but my Y does not go up or down, so this is going to be right on the X axis, and that's going to be C. And then I'm going to go negative, two, negative six and a positive two. This is going to be D. And then I've got positive 1 and a negative 4, so this is going to be E. So look at these, make sure you've got the correct points and they were put in the correct order. All right, now we're going to name some points. They've already got the points and they're labeled with the alphabet for me. So I'm going to find the points. Remember, we're going to go on the x-axis first. Let's start with A. I'm starting here at 0, so I've got to go 1, 2, 3, 4. That lines up there in a negative direction, and I've got to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in a positive direction. So A would be negative 4. Not wanting to work for me, and a positive six. If I look at B, I've gone over one, two, three in a positive direction and one up in a positive direction. So that's going to be my coordinates are going to be three, one. C, I've got it lying right here on the y-axis. I don't, it didn't go either way on my on X. It didn't go to the left or to the right or to the left, but it went straight up. So I know it was started at zero on the X axis and went up one, two, three, four, five in a positive direction. So this is going to be zero, five. Look for the D. If you notice, the D is right there where the two number lines intersect, and we called this the, cor the ordered um, pair for the or origin, which we said would be 0, 0. E, I know, is going to be over to the right one, and I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, so that is going to go over in a positive direction 1 and down in a negative direction 3 for my Y. If I look at my F, I'm going to go in a negative direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be negative 5, and I'm going to go down in a negative direction, 
one, two, three, four, five, six. So that will be a negative five, negative six. Hope that you all got the same answers that I did. Make sure you write them down and have them labeled on your, on your paper that you were given today. All right, now let's find the distance. There are two ways we can find the distance. One, we're gonna do some counting, which is very easy when it's like this. The next way I'm gonna show you how you count when you don't have a number line or a coordinate points. You're gonna look from A to B. I wanna know how far is A to B. This is like being on a map and you're trying to find school to your home or school to your best friend's house or something. I'm gonna start at A and I'm, the only time I'm gonna count is when I go over to the next hatch mark, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So from A to B, it's gonna be eight units. And we're gonna call it units because those are what our squares are called on our coordinate plane. Now I'm gonna go from B to C. I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's going to be seven units. Notice I was going down, and normally we say this is in a negative direction, but remember what we said, distance is never gonna be negative. So I just went seven units down. All right, C to D, I'm gonna go over one, two, three. So this will be three units from C to D. Okay, so that's the way you would t use it if you had it on a coordinate plane. Now our next slide and our last slide is going to show us what we do if we don't have a coordinate slide and we need to figure out, and I'm taking it with me, I'm having to, take, I'm having to decide how do I find the distance. Well, first of all, this one says, if two points are in different quadrants, remember quadrant one, two, three, and four, you're gonna add the absolute values of the unlike coordinates. For example, I know that this is gonna be a negative three and one, which is gonna be in quadrant two up here on the left. And this is a two and one, which is in quadrant one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the absolute value. Remember, absolute value means we're counting distance, so it can never be negative. So it's always gonna be a positive number. And I know that I'm doing the unlike. Notice that one is in the Y values in both of these. So I'm gonna look at the absolute value of positive, of negative three is three. And I'm gonna to add to it the absolute value of two, which is two. And when I add three and two together, I get five units. Why don't you try this one to see if you've got it right and come back and see if we've got the same answer. I know here that I've got negative three and negative three are my like terms. I know because y is positive, this one is gonna be in quadrant two. I know because y is negative on this end, it's gonna be in quadrant three, so they're in different quadrants. So I'm going to add the absolute values of the unlike terms. Negative three and negative three and my x values are alike. So I'm gonna say the absolute value of four is four and the absolute value of negative five is five, and I know that nine and four plus five is nine units. All right, let's see what happens if two points are in the same quadrant. If they're in the same quadrant, I'm going to now subtract the absolute values of the unlike coordinates, okay? So let's look at this. These are in the same because I've got a negative and a positive, I have a negative and a positive. I know that those are in quadrant two. They're in the same quadrant because they have the negative and the positive in the same in the X and Y's in the very same order. So I'm gonna look for the unlike values, which are gonna be three and one, and I'm going to subtract their absolute value. I know the absolute value of three is three and the absolute value of one is one. Subtract these two and I know they are two units apart. You try this one and let's see if we get the same thing. I see that two and negative seven, two and negative 11, they are both in the same quadrant. So I know that two and two and my X values are the same. So I'm gonna take the absolute value of seven and the uh, negative seven and the absolute value of negative 11. I know that that's positive. And I'm gonna start with a larger number because I know that I cannot end up with a negative because distance is never negative. So I know that the absolute value of negative 11 is 11 and I'm gonna subtract it from the absolute value of negative seven, which is seven, and I know that that is going to be four units apart. So these two points, without even having to figure out 
where they lie on the coordinate plane, I know that they are going to be four units apart. We're going to be doing some of this tomorrow, so just make sure that you get this, you read over it, you watch it, make sure that you understand it, and I'll see you, in the, I'll see you tomorrow.